Let's see what we got. Whoa. Man, what shoe is this? This is our Jordan. It is. A Jordan 13? Is it a Jordan 13 low? Oh! Yeah. Here you go. Oh, hey. yes, sir. It's the show that brings you drip from around the NBA. Tune into the Sneak Fest show presented by Ten Toes Memphis, where we talk sneaker culture, fashion, shoe trends, and lots more. Join me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, Sherman, Jerry, and Adam every Tuesday live at 10 a.m. on Grind City Media. Rob, let's hear some, yeah. can we get some nugs? Points scored during the NFL playoffs. Memphis, number two on the list. Ah. That's because Jake Elliott and Riley Patterson. Rosa, you don't have to rain on the parade. That's because yeah, yeah, no kidding, Roser. No pooping on nuggets. Put that as the title of the show this week. Get your sports betting picks and trends with Rob Fisher, Lang Whitaker, CJ Hurt, and John Roser. The Odds Couple. Now live every Thursday at 10 a.m. on Grind City Media and YouTube. This girl shared a text message that her dad sent their family group text. He said, I can't keep up with the pressure of always having to LOL or like or heart everyone's random thoughts, picks, and amusements. I never do it. You just don't answer? I, no. And I just want everyone to know on any group chat I've ever been a part of, I see you. I like your posts. I just forget to do it sometimes. Tune in to Rise and Grind with Jessica Benson. Live daily at 8 a.m. on GrindCityMedia.com. It is time to talk about who you want to see in the dunk contest because that's really the competition that matters the most. Ja's not on my list. Ja is on my list. Yeah. I he mean, won't do it. No. He's talked about what would what it would take for him to do it. He's like, three mil. Like, he's not going to do it. I think if he was in it, he would win. But I, I also feel like there's nothing for him to win anymore. Like, he's already won. The- he knows. Join Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Ray Johnson, every Thursday as we debate the hottest topics in the NBA. I am a Joe on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and our social channels. HBCU Huddle with me, CJ Hurt, and Mike Wallace has all of your HBCU football, sports, and culture needs covered. We discuss the hottest stories weekly across the black college sports landscape, including the SWAC, MEAC, Tennessee State, Lane, Lamorne Owen, and all the black colleges in between. New episodes drop every Thursday, and you can stay connected with the latest stories and discussions about your favorite HBCU by going to grindcitymedia.com, selecting the podcast folder, and clicking on the HBCU Huddle tab. HBCU Huddle is a spot for all your black college sports and culture needs. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. That's why we're looking for team members to reinvent the steel industry, much like the Grizzlies are reinventing basketball. Our edge starts with you at www.bigriversteel.com. That's www.bigriversteel.com. Hungry as a bear? Grizzlies fans can score big by ordering their favorite combos. If you pick up the three Doritos Locos Taco combo from your local Taco Bell through March 21st, you'll score a key tag good for a free Chalupa Supreme on future visits. What's better than a Grizzlies win? Free Chalupas at Taco Bell. Stop by today to get yours. Available at participating Memphis area Taco Bell locations while supplies last. Free item valid per disclaimer on back of key tag. Nacho fries are back at Taco Bell. You know, the fries covered in bold Mexican spices you dip in a warm nacho cheese sauce. You could also dunk them into nacho cheese sauce or pour the sauce onto a pile of them and create like a nacho fries nachos. The thing is that you eat them with nacho cheese sauce. That's what makes them nacho fries. Otherwise, you're just eating fries and sipping on nacho cheese sauce, and that's the wrong way. Sorry, just really passionate about nacho fries. Nacho fries are back, only at Taco Bell. At participating U.S. Taco Bell locations for a limited time only while supplies last. Contact local store for hours and participation, which vary. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth K-6 through grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, visit Grizzlies. Grizzlies.com slash community slash education today. At Mountain Dew, we'd like to remind you that the world as we know it would not exist without the number zero. Which is why, at Mountain Dew, we'd like to recognize the number zero for making Mountain Dew Zero Sugar possible. Even with no sugar, it packs all of the bold citrus kick Dew Nation knows and loves. It's so good, you have no reason not to try it. As in zero. Get it? 
crack open an ice cold Mountain Dew Zero Sugar. It's Zero Sugar, all Dew. Live from FedEx Forum, this is the Chris Vernon Show on GrindCityMedia.com and the Grind City Media YouTube page, presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Now, here's your host, Chris Grindcitymedia.com. It's Chris Farnan. Show. Welcome, 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 welcome. It's a Thursday, February 23rd, 2023 edition of the show. Today on the show, the president of the G League, Sharif Abdur Rahim, former Grizzly, going to join us in studio. He is in town because there are some big events going on in South Haven with the Memphis Hustle over the course of the next two nights. Grizzlies back underway. Tigers have a game tonight. Memphis is going to take over national television tonight. We got a bunch of stuff to get to. Let's do it. Turn it up. having a good day. All right, so uh, it's going to be quite the eventful evening tonight. The Memphis Tigers are going to be back in action. They are playing Wichita. That's going to be on ESPN2. You have the Memphis Hustle that are playing against the G League Ignite and the projected number two pick in the NBA draft, Scoot Henderson, as they're going to be playing for the next two nights. Um, thus, Sharif Abdur-Rahim is in town, and he is going to join us in studio later in the show today. And, of course, the Grizzlies are back in action, and they are going to have a very big stage on the first game back from the All-Star break as they are playing against the Philadelphia 76ers in Philly tonight for a one-off before they come home and they're going to play against Denver. They start, they come back from the All-Star break and they play the number three team uh, as it stands right now in the Eastern Conference and a possible MVP in Joel Embiid. And then they are going to turn around and play against the number one seed in the West and a projected MVP as of this point in Nikola Jokic. And though I felt good about the prospects of Steven Adams returning yesterday, Taylor Jenkins did not sound good about it. He's not going to be there tonight. Didn't sound like uh, he would be available for Saturday. So I don't know if, I mean, I saw Steven right before the All-Star break. We saw him. In Salt Lake City, uh, they're representing Jaron and helping him get elected to vice president of the Players Association and supporting Ja and Jaron while he was there. And so I had just gotten very hopeful given the timeline that they'd given at the very beginning. And, you know, we have seen his outrageously outsized impact on this team. We had a concern when he first got hurt that 
it could be very impactful. He, we had not seen the team really without him for any length of time. And yet his ability to really get the whole offense going by having someone die on a screen, um, especially in the half court, uh, his ability to enhance the best three players on the team, and most importantly, for a team that's not the greatest of shooting teams, his ability to vault the Grizzlies to the best offensive rebounding team in the NBA. Um, All of those things have been sorely missed. And so the sooner the better for Steve-O to come back, but it does not sound. And man, if you ever needed him for two games, it would be against Joel Embiid tonight and against Nikola Jokic on Sunday. But it sounds like we're going to do watch the Grizzlies without him at least for a little while. I don't know if they're being just mega cautious about this, which, you know, they have erred on the side of caution for sure with a lot of the injuries. And I don't really have a problem with it because in the end, while I would desperately like to see him and they need him against these two teams, um, I don't want to screw around with anything that could jeopardize him for the playoffs because the ceiling of the Grizzlies is wildly lowered with his unavailability. And so whatever it takes to make sure that he is 100% and he can remain uh, 100% for the rest of the way and going into the playoffs, um, I'm for that, you know. But I was hopeful, man. I I really was. Um, And I know he's been working out, and I know that most people say he's close. So hopefully within uh, the next week we're able to see him, even if we're not able to see him for this first night. But, yeah, there's going to be a lot of basketball going on uh, tonight, including all of the Memphis teams. Uh, Before I get to anything, I welcome John Roser to the show. John Roser, a.k.a. the Cologne Ranger, the Body Spray Bandit, Senor Sack, Johnny Backwell, Johnny Bearcat, a.k.a. the Grim Roser, John Asparagus, Johnny Net Carb, a.k.a. John Lance. What up? Yeah, it's uh, not just the Memphis Hustle. It oh. is your first place in the Western Conference, Memphis Hustle. Mm. Yeah, number one in the West right now. Is that so? Yeah. Wow. 14-5. I saw the Ignite records not that very not very no, good. No, they're not very good. They're seven and eleven. Um, I wonder if some of it's one. Well, they got a bunch of young guys. Obviously, they yeah. They don't have. It didn't seem like they've got the uh, like the recognizable like veteran names like they did at the very beginning. There's no but Jared like, Jack. Yeah, they had. Yeah. When they had him, and there, there's a couple other dudes. Yeah, they, that were playing with them at the very beginning. That yeah. Jalen Green year. Yeah, they've got. Uh, they've got Poo Jeter. Oh. Now, yeah, great name. Yeah. Um, you'll remember this one. John Jenkins. Yeah, from, from Vandy. Vandy. From Vandy. He's the only guy on their team that can shoot the ball. Uh, <laughs> and he shoots it great, but nobody else on their team can shoot the ball from the outside. But, uh, no, they've got uh, Scoot, Leonard Miller, uh, City, Sissoko. Those are kind of the three, like, names. Yeah. Um, that, as far as prospects go. And Shaq's kid, Sharif O'Neal, plays for him, too. Oh, he does. Yeah. And you say he looked very good in that uh, G League yeah, game. Yeah, but he's only averaging, like, five points and three rebounds in the G League. But he was he had, like, 17 and nine in the next up game. Yeah. Maybe he's got a little uh, Rudy, Jeff Green, Cam yeah. Reddish. Maybe he's got a little bit of that in him where it's like, hey, let's play pickup, and this guy's going to be the best player in the oh, world. Oh, and Mojave King. Mojave oh, King. Mojave King. Mojave King. Yeah, another one. Amazing guy. name, yeah. and he oh, was in the Rising name. Stars game also. Yeah, a lot uh, of their guys were, yeah. So have you ever been around Sharif Abdul-Rahim? I have not. So the only time I was ever around Sharif Abdul-Rahim, uh, of course – The Grizzlies were announced to be coming to Memphis. They were going to be moving from Vancouver to Memphis. And then by draft night, by the time we had gotten to draft night, there was all of this changeover from the former Vancouver team to the Grizzlies team. Um, Some of their major players that were a part of that Vancouver team were traded before there was ever a game in Memphis. Most importantly, Mike Bibby and that deal that went on with Jason Williams. And so Jason Williams ended up becoming a Grizzly. Then there was the draft night trade that netted Pau Gasol and uh, Lorenzen Wright and 
Brevin Knight, I believe, were all part of that deal. Um, the first night, and then of course they, you know, they went on from there with Jason Williams. They had some other veterans. They had uh, Pau Gasol. They had Shane Battier, and the rest. And that was the beginning of the Memphis Grizzlies here. But before that, because that all turned over on draft night. Before that, I was working for a radio station. Uh, WHBQ at the time, and they had gotten the rights to, they knew that they were going to be carrying Grizzly games coming up. And this is before Hasseltine has been hired, and like, it's not even, like, again, this has all just happened. There's been this announcement that the that Memphis is going to be getting an NBA franchise. Everybody had those signs in their yards, the NBA Now stuff and whatever else. And then it's announced that they're going to have a team coming to Memphis. And so I'm working at this radio station, and the program director at the time is who I've I've talked about in the past, a colossal boob. Um, And, like, was, like, always negative about everything. It's just a drain. Like, he was never happy about anything. Guy was just. It was was a great introduction, honestly, into my media career and radio life Um, because he was – it was not easy. So, anyways, he comes up to me and he's like, "Uh, yeah, you've, you've worked with these guys. You know these guys. They're just a drain. They always have – everything is – a burden, <laughs> you yeah. know, like like anything. Oh, we gotta do. You know what I mean? Like, oh, we gotta do this. Oh, we gotta do this. Oh yeah, they're saying that they want us to do this. <laughs> it's like anything, like like just basic stuff. Anything is a burden. Like this is the guy that when I worked at the radio station, I was like, hey man, um, if I have to work the Sunday night football game. And press the buttons because we ran Sunday night football. I was like, I'm up here until like late, like that Sunday night game. And literally, I'm just, you know, yeah. Kevin Harlan or whoever it was would be like, uh, Westwood won. And then they, you know, there'd be a little tone and I'd press the button. And then the commercials would play and I'd press the button and I'd turn it back on. And the rest of the time, I would just like read magazines or books or whatever I would do, right? And so one day I go into his office and I'm like, hey, Dan, I was like, hey, uh, I was like, so I'm up here, and, like, um, the the Sunday Night Football game ends. And I was like, and I just really, like, just put it back to network or whatever. I was like, would you care if I did, like, a, like a post game? Because I was just trying to get as many reps on a microphone as I could. And so uh, as much practice as I could. And I was like, this is a good opportunity because it's like mega late at night. There ain't got to be that many people listening, whatever. I was like, can I do a post-game show after the Sunday night football game? And he's like, I I, I don't give a crap what you do. I'm not paying anybody. So if you, if you want to run the board too. And I was like, okay, I'll, like, I'll, I'll run the board too. He's like, he's like you got to play the music. He's like, there's no way you're going to be able to take phone calls. And I was like, well, can I just put the phone calls, like, straight on the air? And he's like, yeah, I don't care. Like, do whatever you want. Just don't bother me with it. And I was like, (laughs) all right. I'm, I'm like, 22 years old. Yeah, looking back, it's just so wildly irresponsible, honestly. And so he would let me do this show. And I would do it by myself. And I would press the buttons, and I'd run the board, and then I'd, like, the phone would start ringing, and I would just literally... Hit the button. I'll be like, you're on Sports 56. <laughs> and somebody would just start talking to me. Yeah. I was like, this is crazy. But he, that that gives you a glimpse as to what this guy was, right? Just didn't care and like, yeah, whatever. And everything's a burden. You're right. And it's like, just don't bother me. <laughs> okay. So he comes to me. And it's after the Grizzlies are announced as getting a, an NBA team. And he's like, uh. I got an email. We got to do this thing this weekend, Saturday. Can you can you be there? At uh, it said um, the Fox and Hound on Sanderlin, and I was like, well, "What is it?" He's like, "I don't know. It's something with the NBA about them about like Memphis coming here." And I was like, "Well, what are we doing?" And he's like, I, I, "Just can you be there at two o'clock on Saturday?" And I was like, 
yeah, I, I, I guess. And he's like, all right, fine. Uh, at least I've got somebody that can do it. And I was like, okay. I don't know what I'm doing, but yeah, all right, I don't, sure, like, I'll be I, there. I mean, this, was, this was life then. So, anyways, <laughs> I show up at 2 o'clock on a Saturday. This is in the summer, okay? I show up at 2 o'clock on a Saturday in the summer, and I go in, and they've, like, invited people. Like, it's something. Like, there is no, you got to remember, there's no, like, real, like, Grizzlies organization or anything in town. So I don't even remember who, like, put it together. But I show up, and it's, like, this announcement thing that the Grizzlies are coming to Memphis. And there's, like, a setup there. And they're giving away, like, you know, T-shirts or something. Yeah. Right. They say, and then I'm there, and Sidney Lowe, who is the head coach yeah. of the team, and Sharif Abdur Rahim, like walk in, and they're there, and they're like meeting and greeting people, and then I have to like do this thing where I like interview or whatever, and I'm like, this is crazy. Like, what is happening? Yeah. And I remember going back and being like. Hey, that was actually like kind of like a big deal. Like they had their their coach was there, their best player was there, and whatever else. And they and he was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it was bizarre. Yeah, bizarre. And then I never saw Sharif Abdurrahim again because he got traded by Draft Night. He did an event, one event, and the only reason I know this is because I was there and doing the. Um, I remember uh, going to that Fox and Hound and Sidney Lowe and they had flown in Sharif Abdurrahim to like kind of promote the Grizzlies being here. And of course, he never wore a Memphis Grizzlies uniform. He was traded to the Atlanta Hawks uh, prior to that season ever beginning. But it was all just so weird at the very beginning. Yeah. You know, one of, one of my, at the time, you know, and I've told a lot of young people this about finding like kind of their niche. Um, you know, I got very fortunate in terms of the timing of when I came here, because as I had moved here, I don't know if the Grizzlies wouldn't have moved here if I would have just settled down and ended up living in Memphis. But truly when they came here, I knew from the moment that they came, there were, there were the guys that kind of cornered the market or people listened to for SEC stuff. There was people that listened to, the guy that was, you know, Lapidus was the guy. If you wanted to hear about the history of Memphis and you wanted to have some historical context towards everything and a guy that you'd been listening to for 30 years, like, he had that market. And there were guys that you listened to if you wanted to hear about the Tigers. And there were guys that you listened to if you wanted to hear about a myriad of different subjects. But I thought if no one will ever be able to say that they went to more Grizzlies events or games or practices or press conferences or anything, then I will if I start this right now. And so I just dove into it. And in many years, it was not to my benefit. Um, but obviously, it ended up being greatly to my benefit, um, covering the team for the whatever 21 years now that they've been here but when we when they first started it was stuff like that and then the other thing i remember was they had draft workouts in memphis and when they had the draft workouts at that time it was like billy knight dick versace michael heisley would be there and i remember uh i would go over to rhodes college is where they worked out the different players i saw uh, that draft was Jason Richardson. One of the best workouts I ever saw was Jason Richardson versus Trenton Hassel. And, I mean, these guys went at it, at it the entire time. And I really thought they were going to draft Jason Richardson after that, yeah. after, the, after that workout. But I would go over to all those workouts or whatever, and then um, there were, like, all these NBA guys in town. And I thought it was crazy because it was all, like, they would let me into the workouts, and but everything was, like, very – laissez-faire was very open and nobody else was there and so we would get done with like the workouts or whatever and i would go and i would sit down with chuck daly the famed uh detroit pistons coach who is 
he was big buddies with Heisley, the former owner of the Grizzlies. And so I would get these like interviews with Chuck Daly about the workouts and about like what he saw from Jason Richardson and about whatever and like kind of what he thought about everything, right? And I was like, this is crazy. Chuck Daly, by the way, could not have been cooler to me. God rest his soul. So walk out. I get these, you know, I'm so I'm on cloud nine. I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like nobody else is interviewing Chuck Daly over here. Nobody even knows yeah. he's over here. This is great. I've got it on my little recorder, whatever. I go back to the station and my program director will be like, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, like all proud what? and everything, yeah. and he just craps all yeah, over yeah. it. He just didn't care about anything. I tell him, hey, I got booked up Mickey Mantle on the show. He'd be like, yeah, you'll probably ask him stupid questions. Yeah, like, oh, whatever. DiMaggio was better. <laughs> yeah, <I'd> be like, <laughs> you'll, <laughs> you'll screw it up. <laughs> like, thanks. <laughs> everything. And I would like get these, like, I'll get these awesome interviews. I get these exclusives or whatever else. And he, he couldn't have cared less about any of it. It's a different world. It's a different Ooh. world. Uh, way back when. But it's all a very long winded way of saying that uh, that's the only time I've ever been around Sharif Abdurrahim. So I'm excited he's going to be in studio uh, today as he is the president of the G League. I am super excited for the NBA to get started after. Yeah. The All Star break. Uh, there are not that many games left in the season. Yesterday, or the day before, rather, we went through kind of the rest of the schedule, which they have played 59 games up to this point. So that means they got 23 games. Well, I'm sorry, they played 57 games. So they have 25 games left in the season um, the rest of the way. And it was pretty bleak over the course of the last, you know, 10 games and seeing them without Steven Adams. They were able to end on somewhat of a high note after they had played against, um, after they won that last game right before the All-Star break, even though they had screwed around with it for a little while. But the numbers were crazy in terms of how much impact Steven Adams has had on what the Grizzlies have done so far uh, th this season. Their numbers prior to Adams getting hurt versus what they are like uh, when they when after he had gotten hurt, you see the. I mean, it's it's brutal. Um, let me try to find this real quick. Uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. So. In the first 46 games. So they were 3-7 and seven without Adams. Yeah. And I know that people on the outside, you know, I was listening to uh, Simmons and Rosillo's pod. And they're like, should Steven Adams really add, you know, matter this much? Right. And, like, the answer is probably not. Yeah. <laughs> but he does. Like, it is what it is. They're 3-7 and seven in those 10 games. In the first... 46 games a season. This is uh, Stephen Adams' stats put this up, of course. Always tracking it. First 46 games of the season, uh, the Grizzlies were number one in rebounding. Uh, the last 10 without Adams, they were 24th. Offensive rebounding, they were number one. Last 10 games without Adams, they are 14th. Middle of the pack in the league. Defensive rebounding, number two in the league. With Steven Adams. Last 10 games without Steven Adams, 25th. <laughs> plus minus, plus five and a half. Number two in the NBA. Minus 3.6 in the last 10 games without Steven Adams, 23rd in the league. Offensive rating, they were ninth. Since Adams has been hurt, 28th. God. Second chance point. Number one in the league, almost 17 points per game. Since he's been hurt, 23rd in the league. Yeah. <laughs> Effective field goal percentage, uh, it's about the same. Three-point percentage, it's down a little. Screen assists, obviously down massively. Uh, Two-point contests, uh, they were seventh in the league yeah. prior to him getting hurt. 
23rd in the league since. So, I mean, the stats are just crazy yeah. to see what has happened since he has been out of the lineup. And is it all 100% a correlation with Steven Adams being out? Of course not, right? It's not all Steven Adams being out. But when you get up to, like, 10 games and you can look at it, and some of those things are very, very simple. Like, yeah. in terms of the screen assist, in terms of the offensive rebounding, in terms of uh, – but I think it is – it goes without saying the effect of his injury has been so much bigger than yeah. we could have ever expected. It they be. are downright uh, mid yeah. without him. Yes. Not going to say they're bad. No. They are mid. <laughs> it is. They're just whatever without him. It, and it, while he is – a role player. A, he is a great role player. Yes. And B, he has this outside important, outsized importance because he makes the whole thing go. Yeah. You know? He makes Jaron a different player. And the, and he the, makes uh, yeah. Morant a different player. And the truth is, what we've known for, this has been an ongoing thing for several years now. Their half-court offense is bad. Yeah. And, and it ain't great with him. No. But it's He gets horrendous. the rebound, though. But he gets the rebound. <laughs> like, right. yeah, so you Gives miss, you the opportunity. but he gets, yeah. And the mo- most important thing is the, how it just sets the whole Morant thing into motion. Yeah. Once he sets that screen and Morant turns the corner, now it's all, now it's all going. And it doesn't go. Yeah. You know, there's not the same. Guys don't die on screens in the same way. They don't have to pay attention to a guy flying towards the defensive backboards. I mean, he consumes so much energy from the other team because, frankly, if you miss a shot and you don't apply pressure to him, he's getting the ball. (laughs) End of story. Yeah. And he's always there in the paint on the other end. So you want to put pressure on the rim, it puts a lot on Jaron. I mean, there's really nobody else. Jaron's the only one. And so, man, they need it back. And now, of course, they're playing Embiid. They're playing Jokic. Sucks. Because this is when you need him the most, the absolute most, is playing against those guys. But maybe they'll surprise us. You never know what a team's going to look like coming out of the All-Star break, right? Is it going to be that they're really rested and they're feeling really good about themselves? coming out of the All-Star break, that they really needed that? Or is it going to be that they they got drained out on the All-Star break too? And that now it's kind of a lazy affair when you're coming back. It takes a minute to get cranked back up. And that could be true of both of the teams, honestly. And I don't know, like, you know, Embiid sat out of the uh, – he sat out of, like, all the All-Star stuff. He didn't even show up to the media day stuff. I don't even know if he was there. Was he there? I don't know if he showed up until Sunday. He may not have even Over showed the up. Until, yeah, he may not even have showed up until Saturday night or Sunday. Yeah, I don't know. And so obviously that was because he he's, he said he'd been playing hurt. Yeah, right. So I don't know. Is he is he on their injury report for tonight? That would be enormous, right? If I he, would imagine he's playing since he played in the All Star game. He didn't play much. No, but he played. Yeah. But, I mean, there's not, like, I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of bizarre how you can, I mean, look, we spent enough time on the All-Star stuff. But, I mean, the guy's just blowing off everything. There's nothing about him not playing. Okay. He's not even. Yeah, there's nothing. There's. I mean, if you just type, he played 28 minutes in the All-Star game. Yeah. But he scored 32 points in the All-Star game. He did? (laughs) Yeah, 32, 7, and 4. The only thing I remember is guys making one pass and shooting from half court. Yes. And Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum going back and forth at each other. Yeah, I think that's about the extent of what I remember from what took place. Um, So, anyways, we'll see. You know, I was... I was pre- I, I gotta be honest with you, I was upset yesterday when that news came out. When Taylor said that Stephen wasn't gonna be back, I was like, "Oh, what?" I had really gotten my hopes up, feeling like he was. Now, I mean, I, I tell you, I saw him pouring with sweat, Roser. Yeah, like he had just been through a long workout, and I was like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, well, I, I mean, s- that, and that was a week ago. Yeah. 
I saw him too one of those days over at. Uh, What's going on? Leaving uh, shoot around, and he was. And we're right around the five. Yeah. You know, the, it said three to five weeks at yeah. the very beginning. We're right there. And the other thing is, like, look, outside of that, I've resented the injury since the very beginning anyway. Yeah. I mean, they, it was the last play of a game, of a game they lost, which they got embarrassed in that game and a play in which they defend they were losing the game and defended all the way until the clock ran out yeah. instead of fouling a guy and then the guy falls down and, br- and busts his knee it's like could this get any worse <laughs> like what <laughs> it's horrible I mean, <laughs> the very last play of the game of a crap game that ended crappily yeah not that was great. the night before. That was the night after Dylan's birthday. And that was the game after the L.A. game. Terrible. Where was, they were just basically on like a three-day bender. They were down bender. by 100. Yeah, they were on like a bender. Yeah, they were down by 100 in that yeah. game. It was bad. Um, the Memphis Tigers are going to be in action. I have not seen an update on King Kendrick Davis. Uh, King Kendrick Davis um, was on crutches two games ago, obviously did not take part in the Houston game that they had just played. They are playing against Wichita, which, again, it's one of those where it's like they're clearly projected to win. Wichita stinks. It's not. The, the line's two. No. Yeah. Memphis is favored by two. Then he is not playing. Yeah. That's what that tells you. Yeah. I like the under 147. I mean, the guy was half. on crutches. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what the projection is regarding if, if, if the Ken Palm thing takes that into consideration. He actually has it a five-point game. 75-70. What'd you say? You liked under what? 147 and a half. Well, that would be under. Yeah. Line value. What is that? 75-70? So that's 140. 145. 145, yeah, yeah, yeah. They just lost to, um, let's see, Wichita. I'm going to Wichita. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, actually, they're on a two-game winning streak. Oh, there we go. They the beat, shockers. They beat SMU in uh, double overtime, and they – you know what? They beat Temple of the Dog at Temple by 14. That's not oh, bad. okay. Maybe they're getting better. That's not bad. No, maybe they're getting better. That Temple of the Dog team played Memphis uh, – to the bone that yeah. first game and Kendrick got to hit the game winner and then the last game you know they ended up the Memphis ended up winning that game by nine but it was no picnic yeah that Temple team is not horrendous I mean they're 113th but they're not what is yeah. what is Wichita Wichita's, well no Wichita I'm sorry it's 113th Temple is 115th but anyway they won those last two look it's all without without Kendrick Davis it's all in peril right like you just got to hope that they're able to play very well i was i was very impressed with the way that they were able to play um against houston it was clearly nice to have lomax back at least if somebody could get the ball past half court even though they had trouble getting the ball past half court i mean they turned it over 11 of their first 20 times that they had the ball in that houston game and so it's scary hours a little bit if you're playing any of these games, especially on the road, yeah. without Kendrick Davis. And this is one of those where it's like, man, if you drop a game to like a friggin' witch, it's crazy that this is so important. But if you do, if you drop a game to some rat team like Wichita, who's 14 and 12, yeah. you're then putting yourself in a position where it's like, if you don't beat Houston last game of the season for that uh, on that senior day or – you don't beat them in like the conference tournament. You're you're in trouble. You're really on the edge because you're there's nobody the else. No, they can't lose any more of these games. They can't. I mean, it's going to be insanely tough for them to. to there's nobody else to get a win against no. because nobody's going to care if you beat UC, UCF is 66. Yeah, I believe if I've got this right, that's the next highest ranked. Where's team. Texas A&M now? Uh, Texas A&M has moved up. That ended up yeah, looking very good. That, that's going to be the Texas and how's win all, against and, Tennessee. Is Auburn, is Auburn gotten better too? Uh, let's see. Alabama, of course, is third. A&M's 25 in Ken Palm. Auburn's 22 in Ken Palm. Okay, so those so, are going to be good for you. Those are definitely good ones for you. For sure, but the problem is that, like, when you get, you know. Yeah, right. When you look at the teams, even right now, that you're around, 
in the, like, say, like, even the Kempom rankings. Yeah. And let me just tell you, okay, I'll just go from, so they're 37. So I'll just go the, I'll go from, like, uh, 32 to 42, okay? Like, kind of in their range. Mm-hmm. Kentucky. Uh, and, and you just tell me, do these teams get the benefit of the doubt? Right. Indeed. Uh, Nevada. No, I mean, they do not yeah. get the benefit of the doubt. Virginia. Yes. Utah State. No. No. Duke. Yes. Duke is 36. Memphis is 37. Yeah. NC State. Yeah. Yes. Oklahoma State. Yes. Yes, because the Big 12 is amazing this year. Who's their coach now? Uh, Oklahoma State. That's uh, Mike Boynton. Oh, okay. Is the guy's name? Uh, the Big Twelve is okay. awesome. This yeah, yeah, yeah. Year. No, they're great. Okay, so then, and and then look, Oklahoma State's sixteen and twelve, but they're going to get the benefit of the doubt because they're in this conference. Next one, Florida Atlantic. No, by God bless, Florida Atlantic is twenty four and three. Wow, in Conference USA. You know, Fish earlier uh, though, huh? we did odds couple earlier. He was t- he talked about the Big Twelve. He said, "Dude, if there's one thing you can fade in the Big Twelve this year, he goes because I've tra- he tracked it. He didn't give me all the numbers." Road favorites in the Big Twelve. He's like, just fade it. Oh yeah, fade it. Fade the road favorites. I mean, and then you look down. Look, Roser. If I just go forty-one through forty-four, Mississippi State, Northwestern, Oregon, Iowa. Everybody loves Northwestern. No, but I'm saying like those four. Yeah. Like almost all those teams. I need. That's why I'm saying. Yeah. You need to get the when Houston game, and you can't drop any of these. These mediocre Power Five teams, the ones that. Those ones, those are all going to get the benefit of the doubt when we're doing the bubble crap. You know? Because those teams, those are, you know, they, they, they like 15 and 13 yeah, you, I, Oregon yeah, or whoever. You, it's you, like, God, you're just messing yeah. around. If you, if you drop anything besides the Houston games, and that's yeah. why it becomes, again, so this becomes outsized importance. Because if you drop anything besides them, these are the teams that you're around, and those are all like okay, you know, ACC, Big Twelve, SEC, did, uh, did you Big say- Ten teams. Look, look. By the way, I went down to you know when I said where right, Cincinnati. Did like, you say them? Uh, no, because Memphis still has a game with them left on Sunday. Uh, Cincinnati. So I didn't know if that could be not a bad. No, they're 67. So they're yeah, it's they're a quad two win. And they're well, they're below uh, UCF. Yeah, it's quad two. Is that what that is? That's, that's, that's yeah. You don't. It's the top 50 are quad one. I mean, I'm just saying, like the teams that are right below yeah. Memphis, NC State, Oklahoma State, Florida Atlantic, who will win their conference, Mississippi State, Northwestern, Oregon, Iowa, North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> Like you don't you don't win that argument versus any of them. No, unfortunately. And if one of those teams, that's they're just also, gonna put them in. Well, then the other thing too that you have to worry about if one of those teams that's like on the bubble, like you, if they go off and win their conference tournament, like boom, they're in. Now you're automatically in, and it you know. Now it the good takes, thing is the good something. thing the good thing is, and you might end up losing to them three times. I don't know. I actually I walked away from Saturday's game thinking if they have Kendrick Davis, they will beat them in their la- in the last home game. Yeah. Of the year. They did that last year. You remember? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and they, that was, that was an awesome game. Yeah. For the University of Memphis last year. Um, they played, uh, they played Houston here. I mean, they, they ran them. They beat them 70. They beat them by 14. Yeah. Last year. That Houston team. And that, that Houston team was number two. Yeah. In the Kempom rankings. Now, unfortunately then, you played them in the, AAC tournament and they beat you by 18, but you were you were able to withstand that, you know you got your, you got a win to go against UCF, you got a win against SMU, and then you played against them in the conference tournament championship and they ran you out the, out the gym, but you had gotten that win against them and you're kind of in the same situation. I mean, last year the second best team. In the conference, uh, ranking-wise, outside of Memphis was SMU. They were 62. So it's really like the same. Yeah. It's really like the same as it is this year. 
Yeah, so you, you are in that you, same spot. Wichita tonight, Cincinnati at home on Sunday, and right. then at SMU next Thursday. Those you have, you need to win all three of those before you get to the Houston game, which you have to win too. But you absolutely cannot. You don't want to. If you drop one of them, you have to beat Houston. Yeah, if you drop one of them, you and and that would get you in. Yeah, a win over Houston gets you in. You should. But you would think so. Gary just, would know this better than we would. Yeah, but they, they, well, dude, that is such a they're number one. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You beat the number one team in the country, yeah. and you already have wins over two SEC teams. That is good. I mean, the what happened in the non conference does help. Yes. Because if you're doing like beating the, Auburn and Texas A&M, yeah. who are two legit top twenty five teams, competing going down to the wire with Alabama. And you also you played A and M at home, but you didn't play the other one at home. No. Neither of those two games were on Auburn your home. was neutral. Right. So and, and and Alabama was neutral also. Too bad Ole Miss sucks. Huh? Too bad Ole Miss yeah. sucks. That could have been one too. But I mean those th- those those teams, it's not like if the argument is like, what would they have done in a bigger conference? Like they don't so many years when Memphis was playing in uh you know, some horrible conference. It was like, well, what would they do in a big conference? Because they'd play like one, maybe two teams from a reasonable conference, and they'd lose it. And so you'd always lose that argument, or you'd get a terrible seed during the passionary years because you, you would lose to anybody that was in the top 25, and then you would run through your conference. Yeah. And then they would have that argument like, well, what would happen if they were, you know, what would happen if they had to play all those teams? And I was like, well, they don't ever beat them, so it's hard to say. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas this, you say, well, what if they had to play in the SEC? He's like, well, bro, they played three SEC teams. You could say it was early in the schedule, but, I mean, they played Alabama to three, and they beat Auburn, and they beat A&M, who are all good teams. So I do think that helps them a yeah. lot. It's just it's, – it's always scary when everybody surrounding you is these middle-of-the-pack – Big conference team. Well, and what also could help is if bumpy. well, if a team like Texas A&M, which would not surprise me, or a team like Auburn, if they made a run like to the SEC tournament final, like and that just keeps boosting their rating, like that will make you look good. And A&M would not shock me at all, just because I can't name you one player on their team, but they have Buzz Williams. It would not shock me if they did something good in March. It's kind of crazy how all these teams, like the a- the AAC, was a really good basketball conference. Yeah, it really was. Really good. Yeah. But Mick Cronin was this Cincinnati. And uh, Greg. Uh, uh, Greg Marshall was Greg at Wichita. Mar- Larry Mar- Brown was at SMU. Kelvin was at Houston. Kelvin's gotten that thing. Man, good for him. That dude has gotten that thing just rolling every year. They're awesome. Every year. Even Temple at Fran Dunphy, you know, he had like some good teams. A couple there. years they had some good teams. They were yeah. tough out. Tulane's gotten a lot better and Tulane they've gotten has, out yeah. Ron Hunter. Yeah, Tulane has gotten better. Um Tulsa was like they weren't man. five and twenty two bad. No, they weren't. The they, Tulsa on the road game was considered a danger game well, at one that's point what in life. Freaking Penny hired Frank Hayes. He could never beat him there. Right. East Carolina's meh. No, dude. South Florida's been horrible. UCF, I mean, UCF had the team that almost beat Zion and R.J. Barrett in the tournament. And Taco Fall, bro. Yeah, they had Taco Fall. Taco Fall. You know this guy's supposed to go in the lottery? This UCF guy. Wait, what? Yes, dude. Who? He's going to go in the lottery this I don't, year. I can't name you a player for UCF. Huh? I can't name you one player for UCF. Is it uh, Taylor Hendricks? Is that his name? Is that the kid? I'm pretty sure that's who it is. I think it's Taylor Hendricks. Who's the, um, he's going to go in the, yeah, I saw it on Gavoni's mock draft yesterday. He had him like in the top. Yeah, there's one he looking him? at right now. They're, oh, this is a different one, but they've got him nine. And there's one I'm looking at. Nine? Yeah, they've got him ninth. In the country? Or, or, or in, the, uh, in the NBA draft, huh? Yeah. That is wild. Let me see if I can find Gavoni's latest mock. And can I just say, regarding the mocks, and yesterday we talked about how it's Wimbayama, Scoot Henderson, Amen Thompson, uh, who's playing an overtime elite, Azur Thompson, who's playing an overtime elite, and then the top-ranked college player outside of Nick Smith, who's at Arkansas. The top-ranked college player, and when I have talked to 
NBA people, and this is prior to the last, you know, week and all the news that has gone down, um, they loved, as a player, Brandon Miller. They love him at Alabama for good yeah. reason. He's amazing. Yo, that performance last night Dude. is crazy. Yes. 41. And, like, I mean, you want to talk about compartmentalizing. Holy mackerel. Like, that's a, I can't, I, I can't believe it happened. Like, at South Carolina, the kid goes out there after everything that has been out there and reported and his yeah. lawyer putting out that big statement yesterday. And, oh, my goodness, all the infighting going on amongst fans and everything and media about, you know, the situation and what's happened and how Alabama's handled it and how it, Nate Oates has handled it. And then it was like, yeah. you know, I started getting it yesterday just because we talked about it briefly. Yeah. And it was like, Hope you saw what the lawyer said. Mike, okay. A, it's his lawyer. They are supposed to be defending him. <laughs> defending him, and they are also supposed to be extremely persuasive. Hope you saw what the lawyer said. I mean, oh my God. Bro, we saw the text. You can suspend disbelief all you want. You can. You can act like, I didn't know. I didn't even know. There was a gun in the car. I was just going back to... He said he needed to get something out of my car that he had left. And there it was. Just happened to be... like, If you want to twist your head into that many knots to try to... Come on, bro. You got friends? <laughs> I can only imagine these people that are saying this stuff do not have friends. Right. Or have never, like, texted with their friends. <laughs> it's... Come on. Like he, clear, he knew he had a gun, bro. He knew there was a gun. He knew that dude. He, the dude said, bring my heat. If you want to say he didn't know what that guy was going to do with it or he thought his buddy was in danger yeah. or whatever, but don't try to convince me that he didn't know yeah. that there was a gun in the back seat and that he was bringing the guy, uh, oh, it's 1.30 in the morning, and if everybody's been aggressive and yelling at each other, and this guy asked for his eat, I thought he was talking about, uh, you know, frankly, I thought he was talking about his sweatshirt when he said heat. I thought he might be a little nippy outside. Like, come on. Not bro. nippy. Come on. <laughs> Not nippy. Come on. Is it a little come on. nippy? You, you could say the personal responsibility in the end, like, I will say this, not in his defense, okay? But, and not in the defense of Bama or how they handled this or the fact that they, you know, kind of made this like to where he didn't do anything wrong. Like, come on, okay? Stop it already. He is not the, he is not the guy that pulled the trigger, though. You know what I'm saying? The guy that commits the crime is the guy that commits the crime. Is he an accessory to that? That's for courts to decide, right? You, you have to decide what, what, what you feel like his responsibility in the situation is. But this whole, like, I hope you said what, I hope you saw what the lawyer said. It pretty well explains exactly what could have happened. Like, how you can read that and with a straight face say, see, <laughs> you see? That's what happened. It's, it, it's all yeah. very easily explainable. Crystal clear. It's crystal clear. He had nothing to do with it. Read the facts. Read the facts. Look, you need. Uh, you want to do real journalism? Oh, my God. Read the facts first. Here's the facts. Look, he didn't even know what was going on. He didn't know anything about it. He didn't even know there was a gun in his car. He did not block anybody's car in. Like. Okay. Sure. Okay, dude. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Like I, I can only imagine anybody that's saying that is just a colossal nerd. You know, like there's just no way. Have you ever been texted by a buddy? Like th these guys are friends, friends. It's not like somebody didn't know. So he's like, I, I had no idea what this guy was up to. 
He knew a guy who was into something. And you could say he shouldn't be held responsible for the crime that the guy commits. Understood? Understood, right? But what I'm not going to be convinced of is yeah. that, like, I, it was underneath a sweatshirt in the back of his car, and he just happened to go, <laughs> he just happened to go meet these guys. Like, there's literally a text that says, bring me my gun, in not so, in obviously coded language. Right. Bring the heat. That is a incredible coincidence. Yeah. Because I just thought I was driving over there to give him his sweatshirt. Yes. And then he, you can watch the video, clears him completely. The guy reaches in the back seat for something he had left in his car. Brandon <laughs> drove off. Next thing you know, the guy commits a murder. It's like, what? Come on. I understand you guys are like big basketball fans. But can we keep it real for a minute? Never seen Alabama care like, about basketball. Never seen their fans care about basketball like this. And I don't know what the like, I don't know what the penalty should be. But I'm if you're saying, ever going to see them defend someone, I mean, after you watch that guy play last night, this would probably be the guy that the fans would jump on to defend because he. Oh is my God, he's amazing! He is freaking awesome, yo! And if we're just keeping it a buck, a bean, a hundo. To be able to go out and like do the game winning theatrics and score 41 on the road while all this is going on is like wild. Like, you just can block that, that is, out. That is wild. Are you that mentally strong? Or. No, no, there's somebody I guarantee that's out there seeing. Do you think for one second he would be able to do that if he if he had been a part of anything? No, I was going to say. My, I'm like, this guy is. <laughs> this is like. I was going to say either you're that mentally strong <laughs> or you're truly just like a soulless <laughs> individual who's numb to everything Crazy. that has happened, you know? That is wild. Yeah. By the way, your UCF guy, Gavoni, has him 19th uh, in this latest draft. To the Warriors. I mean, top 20 pick. Yeah, for sure. Get you some players, Johnny Dawkins. For sure. So, I mean, yeah. Oh, and that, that UCF game, man, the one that was there, the triple overtime, that thing went back and forth, back and forth. I mean, Memphis blew that game. But, yeah. You know, they got some players on the UCF team. Obviously won. I got one that's going in the top 20 of the NBA draft, according to most people. Uh, oh, right? they got the Houston kid that's going. He's got the Houston kid in the top 10. Oh, Jamar? J no, uh, J J J Jarris Walker? Jarris Walker, yeah. Yeah, yeah the yeah. freshman, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, look, I cannot believe that the, the, guy, the kid had the game that he did last night. But, I, I, yes, I read all the facts. I read what the defense lawyer said. Did I you mean, read all the facts or just your version dude. of the facts? I mean, look. Or did you get your facts from CNN? I, look, I saw this guy – I, I the news was on the other night, and you know, Leslie Ballon, the most famed defense attorney, it was like some kind of, you know, we got bad, bad problems with like juveniles right. committing crimes in Memphis right now, and he was like, you know, they interviewed him, and he was like, he has, he has absolutely no record. He has been a good kid who was involved in, you know, I don't know. ROTC or whatever he was saying and he was like he was a he was an athlete and he was involved in this and this is a this is a kid that has never been in any kind of trouble ever before um and then like listed off the different things he'd been named in whatever and like I'm I, you know it's just kind of on like while yeah, I'm, yeah. while I'm eating dinner right he's going on and then like you know then they come back and like Joe Birch is like you know uh Thomas is accused of three homicides and a bank robbery. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> well, I'm glad he did ROTC. Like, what, what are we doing? What are I'm we glad do? he did ROTC. What, like, and, that's your job. Your job I'm is glad to, he, I'm glad he got a 3.5 GPA <laughs> when job. he went to school. Like, but, that's uh, Leslie Ballard's job. His job is to tell me. Yes. To, to paint this in the most positive, tell me the good light. things about the murderer. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> tell me the good things about. He's like, the he's murderer. like, he's charged with three homicides and a carjacking. It's like, 
<laughs> okay. But here are the good things about him. Like, I have a wrong place, wrong time guy. About the murderer. You know, I, it was just bizarre. And so when people, like, are going to point me to, hey, if you want to know the facts, look at what the defense attorney said. Yeah, right. I'm like, oh, okay. This is my first rodeo. I've never. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> what is going on here? Right? Um, I don't know what's going to end up happening with that story. I really don't. But I know this. I don't either. That dude going and him playing. And when last all night. of that stuff came out over the course of the last 24 hours, and not only does he play, he's like the best player ever. He was freaking <laughs> great. So, the highlights are bananas. Oh, yeah. I watched his highlights. Dude, that one, he just goes he's down amazing. the lane, around the pick, and just takes off and like dunks on two people. The dude. kid can shoot it. He can dribble. He can drive. Like, no, he's it's amazing. Like, he's an amazing. Oh, player. my God. He's got good change of direction. Like, Amazing player. That kid is, yeah, he's awesome, to say the least. Um, so you are going to be down tonight uh, at the Memphis Hustle game. We had talked about how they were playing against Sharif O'Neal. They're playing against, uh, most importantly, Scoot Henderson. Uh, and I, uh, the, the Grizzlies are on against the Sixers tonight, so I'm not going down tonight. I am, uh, I am planning on going down there tomorrow night yeah, yeah, yeah. for that game. For Grizz um, night. I'm told there's going to be like a big crowd and tomorrow there's like a MVP thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For Grizzlies season it's, it's ticket Grizzlies holders. night tomorrow night, so, so the, there's a big fan thing, yeah. Yeah, the, oh, oh, by the way, for Grizzlies night, here's the t-shirt. Yeah, they're giving those away. Here's the t-shirt, Memphis Hustle. That's for, fr- these are for Friday night. Friday night, and I'll show you what they're wearing. Where? The jerseys are fire. Yeah, yeah they are fire. Look, here's the jerseys. Is that Damien's? I don't know. Did you say Jefferson on the back? No, it says G League. It says G League. Oh, it may just not have the they may not have the name on the bottom part of it yet. Yeah, they look awesome, don't they? They do look awesome. I like yeah. the black. And it says Memphis Grizzlies Foundation on the bottom. If we've got man, I got the shorts. I gotta get Laravia's. The shorts or Zaire's. Oh yeah, there we go. Those Different shorts guys. are awesome. Yeah, those are dope. I care about having the shorts more the, than oh. the jersey, man. The yeah, shorts, the, those the are red. awesome. Yeah, the shorts are awesome. I like it. And you, they, they auction them off afterwards. All the proceeds go to, I think, St. Jude. So or they're going to be wearing them for Grizzlies night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, these Memphis Hustle jerseys. And then they're giving away these t-shirts. Yeah, that's for Friday night. But yeah, tonight, you can come down to Laters if you want to come tonight. Yep. Uh, ESPN Plus if you want to watch. Well, the other thing is, like, look. You can do the setup at your place. You can. You got three TVs upstairs. You can do Grizzlies, Tigers, Hustle. I will. I will do that tonight. Yeah. Um, not that often that the number two draft pick is going to be coming through town. No. And he's going to go number two. Yes, he will. According to virtually everybody I talk to, that's like set. There's a debate on three, whether it's Brandon Miller at Alabama or one of the Thompson twins or a Nick Smith. Like, there's somebody could move up, but – by most accounts, by most of the people that I talk to, yeah, they tell me that Wembyama will go one and Scoot will go two. So they have in Gavoni's latest mock draft, they have the Thompsons are three and four. Yeah, but they're overtime elite, so obviously they're not going to be here. Uh, I'm saying from the ignite, the two first round picks. Oh, in Gavoni's latest mock, and three of the top 34 picks in his latest mock. So City Sissoko is 34th, and then the aforementioned who I mentioned, Leonard Miller. Um, is uh, he's got him at 25th in his mock. So where was Leonard Miller going to go? Florida State. That uh. was the thought. So he had committed to Arizona State as a freshman in high school. Obviously, that didn't last. Yeah. I mean, you're freshman. You're committing way too early. But Florida, it was thought Florida State that he was going to end up going to Florida State mm. and play for Leonard Hamilton. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sharif Abdurrahim is the president of the aforementioned G League. He is going to join us here in studio on the other side. Chris Varnish Show. Get your Mardi Gras beads ready. Fat Tuesday Memphis is now open. The world's most famous daiquiri bar is opening on Main Street and will be the official pregame party destination for your Memphis Grizzlies. Try the famous Fat Tuesday 190 Octane, Cat 5 Hurricane, or Miami Vice, or create your own signature drink with 12 delicious flavors to choose from. Grab your friends and book your next birthday party or girls' night out at the new Fat Tuesday Memphis, located at 8 South Main Street, where we get the party started. 
Hungry as a bear? Grizzlies fans can score big by ordering their favorite combos. If you pick up the three Doritos Locos Taco combo from your local Taco Bell through March 21st, you'll score a key tag good for a free Chalupa Supreme on future visits. What's better than a Grizzlies win? Free Chalupas at Taco Bell. Stop by today to get yours. Available at participating Memphis area Taco Bell locations while supplies last. Free item valid per disclaimer on back of key tag. Nacho fries are back at Taco Bell. You know, the fries covered in bold Mexican spices you dip in a warm nacho cheese sauce. You could also dunk them in a nacho cheese sauce or pour the sauce onto a pile of them and create like a nacho fries nachos. The thing is that you eat them with nacho cheese sauce. That's what makes them nacho fries. Otherwise, you're just eating fries and sipping on nacho cheese sauce, and that's the wrong way. Sorry, just really passionate about nacho fries. Nacho fries are back, only at Taco Bell. At participating U.S. Taco Bell locations for a limited time only while supplies last. Contact local store for hours and participation, which vary. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth K-6 through grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, visit Grizzly Grizzlies.com slash community slash education today. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. And much like the Grizzlies have recruited legendary talent, we want you to be part of our team. Are you ready to be part of something legendary? Then visit www.bigriversteel.com. That's www.bigriversteel.com. Lieutenant, can you tell us what happened today? Our officers responded to a crash on I-40 westbound this morning. The driver of a pickup truck lost control of the vehicle, veered left, and went into a ditch. 911, what's your emergency? We've been in a crash. Please send someone. My fiancé is hurt. A front seat passenger was wearing a seatbelt. She survived without injury. The driver was not wearing a seatbelt and was ejected from the truck. He died at the scene. Law enforcement writes tickets to save lives. Brought to you by the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. LifeCare Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At LifeCare, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at LifeCareAMB.com. Eight-time Grammy Award-winning, Anita Baker. Anita Baker, the songstress, live in concert. For one night only. FedEx Forum, November 22nd, 2023. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. Don't miss your chance to see the legendary Anita Baker, live in Memphis. Shine Down, the Revolution's live tour. Friday, April 21st, FedEx Forum. With special guest, Three Days Grace. And from ashes to new. On sale now at LiveNation.com. Don't miss Shine Down Live. At Mountain Dew, we'd like to remind you that the world as we know it would not exist without the number zero. Which is why, at Mountain Dew, we'd like to recognize the number zero for making Mountain Dew Zero Sugar possible. Even with no sugar, it packs all of the bold citrus kick Dew Nation knows and loves. It's so good, you have no reason not to try it. As in zero. Get it? Crack open an ice-cold Mountain Dew Zero Sugar. It's zero sugar. All do.
It's time for Grizzbait, a full court press of highlights, insights. Welcome back to the Chris Vernon Show on GrindCityMedia.com and the Grind City Media YouTube page, presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Now, back to your host, Chris Vernon. Yeah, better struggle, but we overcome. And have the jungle, man, jungle, man, jungle, man, jungle, man, jungle, man, jungle, man, jungle, man. We All right, we're back. Chris Vernon Show. Oh, I'm so excited. Sharif Abdul Rahim is here in studio. He's the president of the NBA G League and big event going on down in South Haven tonight because the G League Ignite is in town featuring Scoot Henderson. They're going to be playing against a hustle for the next two nights. Thanks for coming in, man. Chris, thank you for having me. I'm going to try to, you know, one of my goals is going to be now, I, I'm going to tell you two things that are crazy. Number one, I was... I think my last year, I think we were, we were virtually the same year. I was a little younger. I was in high school, and I went to the McDonald's All-American game. St. Louis. In, I, that's where I'm from. Yeah. I went in St. Louis, and by the time it's all said and done, I'm going to try to have gotten all the guys at that point because KG's been in here. Yeah. Vince Carter's been in here. Uh, now, Sharif Abdul Rahim, I got to get God Sham God. He yeah. was Sham God Wells at the time. Yeah. But I tell people all the time. Have you, did you, have you, have you gotten Ryan Roberts? That should be the easy Ryan Robertson, St. right? Louis guy. He's a St. Louis guy. He is a St. Louis guy. But I mean, yeah. like, that was one of the most unbelievable. Yeah, it was a great game. I mean, Chauncey Billups was in there, Ron yeah. Mercer. Yeah. There's a million, right? Like, Antoine, your, high, your Antoine, high school McDonald's All American class Antoine, is crazy. Antoine Jameson. Yep. Um, Track the trailer, God bless him. Um, Albert White, Lou Bullock. I mean, you know. Crazy. SEC, Southern Southern people in the South, B.J. Mackey. Oh, I mean, yeah. yeah. You know, Rodney Hood. <laughs> you remember Rodney. all of them. Did yeah. y'all say Marbury? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Stephon Marbury. Stephon Marbury. Oh, yeah, thought, yeah, Marbury. Paul Pierce? Jelani yeah. McCoy. Paul Pierce was yeah. in there. Paul a lot Pierce. of Hall of Famers. Yeah, it was very, very, I mean, again, our high school class was, you know, Really good. Loaded. And yeah. the other thing was, at the beginning of the show today, I said, I, I don't think I've been around uh, Sharif Abdul Rahim, except when, when the Grizzlies first moved here, my I was working, I had just started, I was working at a radio station, and the radio station guy's like, go over to the Fox and Hound. It's like this sports bar here in town. And he's like, they're doing something with the Grizzlies moving here. He didn't even know what was going on. Yeah. And I ended up going over there, and I ended up having to interview you and Sidney Lowe. They had, like, brought you guys in town yep. to, like, that? yes, I was so there. It was like, I mean, I got, you know, obviously I got traded. <laughs> right. Um, draft, draft night. Draft night, you know, going into the year where, when, when the Grizzlies came to Memphis. But I, you know, say a month before that, I came here part of the kind of group or that was – just talking about and promoting and, you know, doing a lot of the legwork for bringing the team to um, Memphis, not knowing um, that I would get traded draft night. But, yeah. How wild is it to see uh, now those uniforms, which, of course, the Grizzlies brought back, so yeah. hot that now your throwback has got to be one of the highest-selling throwbacks. You know, you know because the, thing that I, the thing that is um, – you know, amazing about that is, is, is you know, one is, is, is really cool because I have a, I have, you know, I have a son and a daughter, and you know, so for them to see people wearing my jersey, they obviously they weren't um, around then. Right. But for them to see, you know, that many folks wearing, um, you know, my jersey or even those jerseys from that era that they recognize is really cool. Um, you know, a couple years ago, I think. You know, Memphis, the Memphis Grizzlies did did like a throwback night, and they did our court. They did the court yep. from old GM place in in Vancouver, and that was really cool. And then the thing I always, my wife and I always joke about is how like we didn't love the teal ones. We didn't like love them. You didn't at the time. You know, we had the teal ones, and we had the white um, original ones, and then we had the black that came like my third year, and we loved the black. And whenever we would travel, we would always ask. Um, Scott, our equipment guy, he's in Toronto now. We would ask him, like, hey, like, would you pack the black one? He's like, yeah, but, you know, they, they making me, they make us, you got to wear the, you got to wear the teal one. So you it, guys didn't even like we the didn't teal. Love the, we didn't love the teal at the, at the time. And it's amazing how cool, like, now it's, like, really. You could, uh, I guarantee you there's oh, one be, down at the team store yeah, right they're now. Very, they're very cool now. But at that time, we, like, you know, we were all the time, like, we loved the black ones. The black ones came 
like you know, two or three years into our time there, and we looked like we wanted to wear the black ones every like every road trip. And who would have ever guessed that now we're be this epic. many years, there were twenty years down the road, yeah, no doubt. and. There's all these people that have an awareness of your career that might not otherwise yeah, cool. simply because the church is like, who is her dream? And yeah, then they go and look it up and they're like, oh my God. I, I was not in charge of branding and marketing. <laughs> and so, whoever, 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 whoever was lucky. doing that got it right. So, yeah. All right. So now let's talk about how you got into the job that you have now. Post career, what are you thinking you're going to do? Well, I, I didn't. Um, yeah, you know, I thought I thought I'd go, you know, I'd go home and you know be with my family. I thought I'd move back to Atlanta. I finished my career in Sacramento, and at the time, you know, I was I kind of ended, you know, not abruptly. I, I I felt like I had a full career. I played 12 seasons, but you know, I still had a year or two left on my contract, and you know, my you know my knees started acting up. So I, I retired or ended like right before a season. Started. And you're you're at that point young mid thirties. Yeah, so like right? thirty one. Right? And you know, I, I was expecting to play that season. It just got to the point where my knee was bothering me so much. I went and, and spoke to you know spoke to the management and told them I couldn't. And um, you know, I'm really thankful to the Kings organization. You know, Jeff Petrie, um, Wayne Cooper, that you know they's like okay, and they asked me to kind of stay around the team, help with some of the young guys, coach, and um, you know they drafted. Um, Jason Thompson and Spencer Haas, you know, they just spend some time with them, help them. And, you know, I thought about it. I was like, okay, I'll just do it, you know, for this season, and then we'll figure out my kids were already in school. And that just, you know, what they did for me is, you know, one, they kept me around the game, which was really cool. But they opened up the organization in a way where I was able, you know, I was able to coach and add value there. I was able to learn from them what they were doing on the front office side. Um, a guy named John Reinhardt, who, who was the CFO then, and is the team president of the um, Kings now, you know, he allowed me to come over and talk to him about the business and took, you know, he would take me to lunch. And it just opened me up to really wanting to be a part of the, the business of sport. And, you know, that turned into, you know, me being assistant general manager with the Kings. I would, you know, I ran the G League team when, when, when the um, Stockton Kings were in Reno. I, you know, I oversaw that. Um, you know, went back to the league office and, and had a position in league operations, um, you know, overseeing the NBA game and what goes on on court. And then, you know, four years ago, had the opportunity to come over to the G League. And it's, it's been great. You know, I think it's been, you know, part, you know, my experience as a player and in the front office, you know, me getting to understand our teams and, and helping our teams grow, helping the league grow, and then having the opportunity to kind of innovate, try new things, um, and really, you know, grow the league in a way that, you know, our players and, and the teams can really be proud. So when – tell me about the NBA job. Before you moved into your role with the NBA G League, what's the NBA job? What, what are you having to so do? So that's, that's league operations. So that's everything, you know, interfacing with our officials, our rules, um, competition committee. Um, you know, where you see the rules being tested in the G League, I was a part of, okay, you know, kind of this is evaluating what's going on in the game mm -hmm. and the health of the game and um, the competition on the floor. So you're just learning everything. I, so I was, you know, I had, again, like, you know, coming from the team side and understanding that to, you know, now at the league office and, you know, understanding, you know, you know reviewing fines, reviewing plays, um, you know, sitting with the competition committee, you know, what are the type of plays, you know, during my time there, some of the, you know, some of the plays that were, you know, travels and, um, you know, it's when the guys would, they, you know, you had a kind of a group of guys who started like hooking players, you know, so like being a part of those processes and understanding, um, you know, is where the kind of the, the, the draft odds were balanced out. So I, yep. I got to be a part of all of that and the evaluating all of, all of those type of processes. So who comes to you about the G League thing or is this something that you – are thinking because you're you've got a job in the NBA office mm -hmm. and so here is this opportunity to help run this G League are the, do they come to you and say hey would you have interest in this or was that something that you had your eye on yeah. once you had because you, you you clearly had some uh, understanding of the way the G League worked from your time in Sacramento with the Reno team um, and helping with that but at that point, you've got a good NBA job, right? Yeah. Like you're in the league office. And so, yeah. um, you know, the, the guy who um, was overseeing the G League, the president of the G League at that time was Malcolm Turner. 
he was leaving to go be the athletic director at Vanderbilt. And, you know, Mark Tatum, who's the deputy commissioner, um, he oversees, you know, the, you know all, all of the, you know, league operations, marketing operations, global, the different global regions around um, the NBA, as well as the affiliate leagues, um, you know, NBA, WNBA, and so forth. And, you know, he and I were on a trip, um, you know, visiting one of the academies. We were opening an academy in, in Africa, and we just started talking about it. He asked me, you know, what I thought about it. Um, the opportunity and he, you know, he told me, you know, how about, you know, meeting with some of the different leaders around the NBA in the coming weeks. And I, and I did that. And then he and I visited again, He's like, what you think, you know, he thought that I could do it. And, you know, where the league was at the time, he thought it was kind of in position for me to help take it to the next level. And, you know, we talked through, um, you know, what I thought were the challenges, opportunities. And, you know, I, 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 I felt like it was, you know, I, I had, you know, play, I've gone through playing, you know, working on the team side. I kind of left for a couple years and went to business school. I'd come to the league office and, um, you know, kind of understood how the league office worked, how our teams work. Um, in between that, I had, you know, when, when I was in business school, I'd interned in, you know, one of the departments at the NBA, Teambo, that, you know, helps teams run um, – run their teams better, the business of their teams better. So I, you know, when I really looked at it, Chris, at that time, I felt like it was like the perfect opportunity for me to take the different experiences um, that I, I kind of acquired throughout my career and apply them. And, you know, obviously there are going to be some learnings, there's still some learnings and challenges, but I felt like, you know, the support was there for that. And then I had something to contribute to the game, to players. And, you know, it's, it's been, you know, it's been great. Um, you know, not easy, but it's been, it's been wonderful. So you get the big job, and now you, you go to the office, the right? Tough, now, the tough job. I don't know if yeah, it's the big job. Yeah, but, but now I'm the president of the yeah. G League. And so it's like, all right, first matters at hand. Here's my ideas. Here are things that I think we need to do in the G well, League. Well, it like, wasn't. What were the, I mean, well, I'll tell you what. You know, I, I, I started my first year, year one, I started – um, mid, you know, mid, mid season. So I started like in January. So we were like, you know, we we're already in the middle of the season. So I'm just, I'm just trying Learning. to keep everything rolling, you know, yep. trying not to mess anything up, <laughs> you know, March of, you know, you know, February, March of my second year is, is COVID. Ugh. Right. So we, you know, we, we shut down right, right. before our playoffs. You know, my third year is our bubble year. Um, so, you know, and then last season. You so know, we, you still have my, all the same ideas yeah, that you so, had when you first got the job? So, so you know, a, a big part of it has been, you know, managing and, and working through challenges and, and trying to just figure things out. You know, some of the things that we've done in that time, and we launched Ignite in the middle of COVID, right? Um, we, we, you know, test the rules. So, you know, we got target score this year, coaches challenge. Uh, transition take file um you know we we went to our kind of um split season where we have our showcase cup and then you know we that culminates at winter showcase where you know guys can teams can win a hundred thousand dollars right you know we implemented that and then we you know have our second half of the season so you know we, we we've done a lot you know we launched two teams so we have a team in mexico city now have g league ignite in henderson nevada so you know four years like we've done a lot but i feel like you know this may be the first season where, you know, we have some normalcy since I've, I've started. Um, and, you know, in a lot of ways, it's, it's just been working and leading through different challenges. All right, so let's kind of go through those one by one. First, let's go to the G League Ignite. That's the team that is in town tonight. Um, most of the mock drafts have Scoot as the number two pick in the draft. So he is very, very, very highly regarded. Jalen Green was a massive success uh, for you guys, as have some other guys. Um, the vision for what that team was going to be, and even, I, I will tell you, yesterday uh, ESPN dropped like a 2024 mock draft. The number one player is a kid that Marcus. is projected to be playing it, yeah. right? The G League Ignite. So, how the G League Ignite has unfolded versus kind of what the dream or the vision was for well, what that was I, going to be. I mean, things have changed in that time, just in that landscape, right? But, you know, the, you know where it came from, the birth of it, it came from a place where, you know, the grassroots space or, you know, pre-NBA, pre-college space was a mess, right? Where, you know, you had, you know, Congress 
talking about all the things that were going on in, in, that, in, in basketball and, you know, reviewing some of the different, you know, shoe company, you know, situations and essentially ask that the NBA have a place for, um, you know, with, you know, not young at that time, 18 year olds, high school kids not being able to go directly to the NBA and they still can't, but that the NBA have a place, have a solution for um, young men that were looking for other opportunities. So you had, you know, you, we, started, we had R.J. Hampton and yep. LaMelo Ball go to Australia. And, you know, we started as a place to say, okay, we should have an alternative for, um, at that time, these best young domestic prospects. That if they want to come and, you know, prepare for the NBA, they can come here to the G League. We felt like we had the infrastructure. Player development is, you know, at the heart of our, you know, purpose. Um, you know, we have the teams. We, we understand and know how to help develop players on the court and off the court. That's where it started. Uh, you know, I mean, since then you have, you know, Transfer Portal, you had NIL, you have all these other, you know, where, which is a good thing where young players have options mm -hmm. and, you know, they can, you know, um, monetize their likeness and, and so forth. Um, so it's, I think it's evolved. I mean, you saw, you know, even, even this season, you know, it's not only, you know, young men like um, Scoot, but Leonard Miller. Mm -hmm. You know, last year, Dyson Daniels. Um, you have a young man from Paris, um, City Sisico. We have a young man from our, our, um, our Africa Academy, Baba Carcine. So I think, you know, what it's evolving into is these best young prospects from around the world have an opportunity to come and prepare for uh, the NBA through, through Ignite. Do you see it in the future? Do you see it as a one-team thing still that will have a presence within the G League as it does right now? Or do you think that as time goes on, I'm going to look up in the future and this is going to be – is the goal to make a minor league – for the NBA, like a true minor league for the NBA? Uh, I mean, I, in, in many ways, I feel like that's, you know, you just look at the number of players, that, you know, unaffiliated players that play in the G League. Um, it's so much better than it was even like three, four years yeah, ago. So, it I really mean, you is. Look at the talent across the G League and the diversity of it, right? Whether it's, you know, we, talk, we were talking before, whether it's Kennedy Chandler, Zaire Williams, or, you know, David Stockton, yep. you know, who they have, you know, totally their, their you know, paths uh, and, and trajectory in the, you know, within the NBA. Is, what was it, two weeks ago? It was Shabazz Napier and Jalil Okafor. Right. right. Yeah. It's like, what? Yes. Yeah, so, so it's just different. Two, you know, your school Hendersons and London Johnsons who, who, who are on Ignite. Um, do I think younger players will have a, a larger presence across the G League? 100% because I think that um, – you know, it's, it's a good chance that, you know, those players will continue one way or the other, continue to find their way to the G League. I mean, you just see how we've had in, in the G League this year, we've had 15 first round picks just from um, the 22 draft, just from this past draft assigned to the G League. We, I mean, that's like double what we've had in the past. Usually first round picks wow. aren't assigned. It's the second round picks, it's two way players. We've had, you know, four, you know just from this draft, so that's not even counting you know, Zaire, who is, you know, for example. Right, top who, 10. Yeah, he's top last year, right? You know, so we've had him, Jonathan Isaac, who, who was a lottery pick. So you just look at, you know, that kind of, that, that traction, I think that continues. No, I was going to say, I mean, the, the first, I remember the first year I called, the, my very first hustle game that I called, um, a lot of these guys, I knew their names from college, the guys that played at big schools. I've told the story. We got to the first time out. I took off my headset, and I look at my buddy, my guy calling the game with me. I go, who in the hell is Tory Craig? Because he is <laughs> yeah. killing us right now. <laughs> I think he hit like 35 in the game, and then he's a starter for Phoenix, Tory right? Craig's got a career. Oh, like, yeah. He's got a look. And then another one I saw right off the bat, and now he's got a $90 million contract. He hadn't played very much lately. Is Duncan Robinson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah, saw well, Duncan you, Robinson. Mean, you, you just see that. I think, again, I think that's – you know, the Seth Curry's and, and, and the margin is so thin between the amazing yeah. G League player and a guy that ends up with ninety million dollars in the yeah, NBA. I mean, you just I mean, it's, you know, we go around, you know, Quinn Cooks and, yep. you know, um, you know, players that have you know started with us and, you know, gone on um, 
and done great things. I think um, you know, just it, it, it speaks for itself, and the opportunity that the league provides. It's, it's, it's outstanding. How about using it as a Petri dish for those rule changes and yeah. kind of the impact? Is it always when I see the Elam ending, when I see the midseason tournament, when I see the take fouls, when I see the uh, – what is it? The, the, the free throw where there's only one, one to one make two, two yeah, right? Two. And then one like, to make three. Are those all – like test runs to see if we would like it in the NBA or are they, hey, this is a different product and for the sake of, you know, we, we, it doesn't need to be exactly like the NBA and some of these things can help speed the game up and some of these things, whether it's a coach's challenges or whether it's a take foul or the one free throw to you know, make two or whatever it may be. Or are those all like from discussions you have with the league office to say, hey, let's try this because this may be something we want to use on the next level? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's a balance. You know, okay. I think, you know, you see things like, you know, transition um, fouls, right? Like, I mean, we knew several years ago. So that had been, that, the transition take foul penalty shots had been in the NBA. Oh, it's I mean, so been good. In the G league, it's so good for it right? to be gone. <laughs> and, and it's been in the G League like the past four years. So it's right. Just, it gave – so then when you, you got to the place, when it went to the competition committee, you had data to say, okay, like this is how, you know, having the penalty shots, this is how it's impact um, the G League. And this is – you know, so, so you can test it and see it. Um, you know, things like one for two free throws, that's a, it's a, that's a little more provocative. And, you know, from a G League standpoint, we say, hey um, – you know, let's try this. Or, you know, we may have from, from our NBA, you know, strategy group, innovation group, you know, they may come to us, you know, what do you guys think about doing the, the target score for the entire fourth quarter at Showcase for all the games? Yeah. Just to, you know, um, you know, again, like aggressive. That's something that's aggressive. But we think for, for, our, for our league, we should, you know, we should be trying things. We should find those things. One for two free throws is a great example. As like a basketball guy, you know, I resisted it. I was like, no, this is like this is like just upsetting my my <laughs> basketball nature, right? Right. But like when I watch the game, you almost forget that you do. You, you that do. You're shooting one for two free throws. So um, I, I think it's a balance. Where it starts is always how can we looking at ways to improve the game, um, and and not not um, not doing anything that, that disrupts the integrity of the game. We never want to do anything that's disrupting the integrity of the game. How can we improve the game? How can we do things that has a has a positive impact? You know, you know, some people would debate the one for two free throws, but we think you know on balance, you know, it, it gives us you know one for two free throws, the target scoring in overtime. It gives us you know a different twist. Well, let's and, do and the like Elam it. ending, right? Like your evaluation of it, what the data has said thus far, and then kind of. How the NBA feels about that, because I will tell you, as a viewer, I watch the games, Roser's call in the games, and we have had a lot of them it. this year. Yeah. Uh, they have had a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so exciting. It's fun. Like, it is I, so I, exciting. I, I, I like it. You know, for you know, the, the the when we did it at showcase for the entire fourth quarter, there were some things, you know, so you know, coaches strategy wise, coaches didn't know they, they were unclear or uncomfortable. Okay, when do I keep my guys in? When do I take them out? You know, if you just think of a fourth quarter, yeah. you know, usually I might put my guy in at the eight minute mark and let him run the rest of the time. Oh, but you know, if so there's a target score, you, you don't, you know, so, you know, you start getting players tired. But I think for that overtime, where it's like, you know, first to seven, I think it's, um, you know, it's outstanding. Could you see a day where the NBA has that? Well, I mean, I, you know, I think. The one thing that, you know, we've seen from, you know, the NBA, you know, from Adam and, you know, Mark Tatum is, like, we have um, an open mind to trying to find ways to, to improve the game. You know, again, without, you know, kind of upsetting the integrity, but to improve the game. So I think if we get to a place where, you know, it, it you know, where the competition committee, the governors feel like it's something that would, improve the game and you know fans are into it you know it's, it's something that would be under consideration but I, the fact that we have it in the g league 100 percent, like i you, love it you, we're evaluating it i have thought the elam ending for over i don't know if you could ever do it for the fourth quarter in the nba just because now you're talking right. about records, records and that's and, that and, would, and, 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 and that would be the issue with the free throw thing and, to me with and, the nba the one for the two place it was it was in you know we, we did it all-star yeah yeah you know? it was great yeah so 
It's fantastic for overtime. I love it. I mean, can you imagine a playoff game where? Oh, first the seven. And say it. Say, and say, say you want to extend. You don't want to make it say because it's got to be an odd number, right? Well, I mean, seven came from seven came from. I want to say the average number of points in overtime was you know somewhere between like oh 10, that like ten and eight or something like that. So okay, came, like it wasn't like it wasn't like just a random yeah right number. I was curious about that. I yeah. didn't know that. that that's yeah, how was, y'all came you know, to came seven. To okay. Like, you know, same thing like in 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 our showcase, it was like 20, 20, 28, 26, 24. But that was like the average fourth quarter score. So it was like plus that. So, you know, it's, you know, it's always some data, some, um, you know, something to support what we're trying to do. We're not just throwing, yeah, throwing right. stuff at the wall. Yeah. You know? So, so. Right now, when you look at the G League and it has become more and more prevalent that we're, we're getting more players out of there, more teams are utilizing the G League than ever before. They are own and operating. It, they're in this vicinity. I mean, we see the hustle guys around here all the time. They're obviously playing their games right down the road. What is the next step? Like when you... Uh, when you're talking about the vision for the G League, how does it grow? How does it get even better than it is right now? Like, what's so, the trajectory? Yeah, I think we're, one we're um, you know, we're twenty, we're thirty teams, but we're twenty eight teams that are one to one NBA teams. So you know, Phoenix doesn't have a team, Portland doesn't have a team. So you know, g- getting those teams on is a hundred percent a priority, and we want all of the NBA teams to have G League teams. Um, we want to continue to be the best place in the world to prepare for the NBA. And obviously that's players, but that's our officials. All the officials now come through um, the G League. That's coaches, Taylor Jenkins, you know, here with the Grizzlies. He's yep. a former G League coach. Um, I just saw Quinn Snyder might get the Atlanta former, job. That's former, where they, former, right? You know, former G League coach. And then we think with all of our teams, we have a great opportunity um, to develop um, the next generation of fans to engage with community. I mean, you think, you know, right here in, you know, in, in, in Memphis, in this area, you know, you know, young, you know, if you're a young kid, maybe you can't go to a Memphis Grizzly game, but you can go to a hustle game. You, know, mm-hmm. you can afford to go to a hustle game. So I think it's a way for us to, you know, engage community um, and just continue to grow um, the game. And, you know, with all, I mean, your show, we talked about it earlier, your show is an example. With all of the different ways that people are engaging with content, engaging with games, um, it gives us the ability, and, and we're a little more flexible, meaning the G League, it, it gives us the ability to, um, you know, be all over the world, to have our right. games and, and to spread the game all over the world. What are you most proud of now regarding the league? Um, that we've been able to ju- just the opportunities that we're able to provide for you know our players. We're like you know when I see we're like thirty plus guys being signed from you know and this is like G League contracted players signed from the G League just did so far this season to um, the NBA and counted. You know to be in place last season when it was you know that really um, just just important time. You know hundred plus you know players signed from the G League to help the NBA. Um, you know, what we saw at All-Star Weekend with Mac and, and the Rising Stars and Next Up game, the opportunity that we can provide to G League players that, you know, have that dream of playing in the NBA. Um, it keeps just, the, And it also gets them in your league rather than going and trying to search for yeah, the money. But, oh, they're, they're trying to make it whole, right? And I know you guys have improved the salaries yeah. a great deal over the course of the last couple of years to where – these guys are making more money than they did. And so it, 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 if you're chasing the dream, right, that like, all right, I am – like oh, we just had a couple of weeks ago um, one of the great three-point shooters in the league, Dusty Hannes, who yeah. became a friend of ours when he was playing for mm-hmm. the hustle. He got a cup of coffee with the Grizzlies. He went over and played that year in Australia just because his agent was like, like I, mean, I mean, it's a lot of money. Yeah. And he goes over there. Now he's back. He's like, you know what, I'm going to give it one more crack at going to the NBA, and that's kind of the signal, right? It's like, yeah, he went and made the money in Australia, but if he's going to give it one more crack to go to the NBA, he's going to go play for the Warriors the, team, right? The, the proximity here of, of playing in, in, the, um, in the G League, the opportunity you have as a player, um, 
you know, to be, again, as a league, to be able to provide that opportunity to our players, to people, um, is the thing that, you know, we celebrate, we're really proud of. Um, and, and, you know, it's a, like I always, like as a human, it's a human interest, you know, story, idea that, you know, I think everybody appreciates, you know, grinding and, and, and trying and pursuing your goals. And, I mean, that's so relatable with, with our Absolutely. players. Absolutely. And the other thing is I think the, my opinion is the perception has changed so dramatically, yeah. even just in the last four or five years, that it was like that was um, – and I don't mean this in a bad way, but players would feel like humiliated yeah, well, or they would feel like, oh, I'm getting sent down yeah. to the G League, you know, yeah. and now. Well, you, I mean, think about it. I mean, again, like you got a coach here in Memphis that coached in the G League. Oh, no, they right? view it so much differently. Right? Like I get, so, Xavier Tillman will start tonight against Joel Embiid in Philadelphia because Steven Adams isn't back, right? Right. Xavier Tillman was told before the season, hey, man, you're not really going to be in the rotation for the Grizzlies, okay? He went to them and said, can I go play for the hustle? Yeah. Went down for the hustle. He's grabbing, like, 17 points, 14 rebounds. He's killing it. Yeah. Got this amazing attitude. Stayed ready, stayed ready. Steven Adams goes down. Now the guy's starting yeah. to fill. You know what and, I mean? And so, I mean, I think, I think the player sees the opportunity. And, I mean, it's just been so many examples of, you know, players being able to leverage their time in the G League to ascend. I think the talent has changed. So young, these young players, whether they're young, you know, you know, Michael Foster, for example, he's with us with Ignite, you know, he's in Delaware. You know, Matt McClung, um, Sharif Cooper, like these are really talented young players that, you know, to, to desire, you know, again, like Zaire Williams, like that talent, like that's emerging talent. That's not Mm -hmm. overlooked talent that's talent that you know someday is going to be a really good you know Pascal, Pascal Siakam yep. you know was in the G League Chris Middleton was in the G League so I think you know there's so many examples now of players being in the G League and using that time in the G League to get better whereas maybe in years past you know that guy was a three-year four-year college player you know now he's like maybe a year in college or no college and yep. he's growing up through our league and people get to see that you know firsthand fred van vliet cj mccollum oh yeah um i got a picture we want to show you oh and see do you you remember this one yeah i tell you man it's like look it's at like, that draft class it's man like the bane it was like the bane of my existence my mother never lets me forget this look Why? at that draft class because it's like it's and cut missing. out of the picture, Steve Nash. He's on the someone, other end of the picture. That's, so this is my draft class, but I'm not in the picture. You're not in that one, but you are in the other one. Yeah, I'm not in. No, I'm in the one that they put on, like that's on the slam. Yeah, 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 yeah. But You're in the you slam one. That picture. That's my draft, and I'm not in the picture. Why? So why? But, but uh, so why is <laughs> Iverson why? not in this one? Because Iverson's not in this one. Because he didn't. So this was, you know, people don't know this. Like it became so legendary. This was like at at rookie. Combine, you know, like if you see Carrie, 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 yeah. in like running shoes. So what it, what it was, <laughs> Kobe, Kobe's hand behind his back because he had a cast on. Um, what it was is we were all together at NBA rookie transition, and then like one of the days they came and guys and said, you know, somebody upper deck or somebody wanted to do like a, a car signing, yeah, or you know, like photo shoot for cards, um, and we all, you know, we all went, and AI he didn't, you know. He, he just didn't go. AI didn't, you know, he, I, I, was, I saw something recently the NBA did, and he, you know, he said he, you know, he don't know what he was doing. He, he didn't show up. He didn't come. So he wasn't in, the, in this what a great What a great uh, yeah. moment, though, that you, on that picture, you say Kobe's arm is intentionally behind his back because he's yeah, got he a cast, cast on? on. He's a, he, he has a cast on. And, and you can't see his other arm. That's right. true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, that's wild. Yeah, so, I mean, they had our uniforms and stuff there. But then in the actual draft day picture, I, I missed the bus going, like, you know, they take you, you know, everybody from the hotel to the, to the draft. I think ours was at Meadowlands. I was, like, really, I, had a good, I got a good friend that's from New York, and he was, like, showing me around New York um, all day. So you were sightseeing. I'm running around, you know, different boroughs. <laughs> and you missed the I'm, draft class I'm photo? In, I'm serious. I'm in Harlem. I'm in Brooklyn. I'm just running around. I had never been to New York. So I get to the draft. I missed the bus. I get to the draft late. Um, and I miss it. Look, think about it. I'm, I'm not in the picture. And my mom, like, never, she, every time she sees it, she's like, just, 
She hasn't forgiven you. <laughs> Mad at me. Because they were on the bus. They are sitting. I get to the green room, and everybody's just sitting there looking at me like, really? like <laughs> Where you were know? you? <laughs> oh, that is amazing. What a story. Yeah. Wow. Well, you still went third. They didn't red flag you for it. No, they, they yeah, still. Yeah. They still. <laughs> okay, so look. Um, last thing. The, these two games that are going on tonight and then tomorrow night in South Haven. Mm-hmm. I'm going down there because Scoot Henderson's yep. playing, right? My son is 13. Last night I said, hey, Friday night, uh, you want to go down there? Scoot's going to be there. Oh, of course. I, he, he knows. And so you knew when you guys are signing this kid up that you knew what kind of a prospect he is. Yeah, but I mean, you, look, you, it's got to have even yeah, blown nobody, past all expectations. Yeah, look, you know, I mean, even if you, you know, go look at, like, you know, any projections that anybody had, you know, it was, you know, I, you know, his kids, people thought were better than him. Um, we thought he was really good. You know, at the time, you know, Rod Strickland was kind of overseeing the program and he thought he was a really special talent. You know, what he's been able to do in the, you know, year and a half, two years he's been with the G League um, has been really special. Um, you know, you'd be, you know, you can't project that, that he has the maturity, the, the, um, humility, you know, he's such a good teammate, you know, he's such a hard worker, he's so competitive. He, I mean, those, those things, those in chat about, you know, any, you know, any young person, you know, you don't have enough information about him. So we're, we're thrilled what he's been able to do. Him and, you know, again, we got, you know, you got Leonard Miller, who, you know, from Canada, really good player, um, City Sissico, um, you know, Babacar, Sene. Um, you know, we just, you know, a lot of um, Mojave King, really good talent on that group. Uh, but, you know, Scooter's, you know, he's leading the class and, um, you know, he, he deserves it. He's doing, he's doing an outstanding job. And for, you know, I think it's good for, for them and for the team, but it's good for our league. Oh, God, especially just on the backs of the Jalen thing. Yeah. Because yeah. Jalen has proven to be, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you can prove that, like, hey, this is, this is not – this is good for you, and it's not going to, and in fact may help yeah. your draft look, look. stock by playing against these guys, and that it is going to better prepare you I mean, for the next level. Having those two top three draft picks in yeah. a, I mean, a couple of years' time, yeah. and Kaminga, huge, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, Kaminga too. Yeah. yeah, but I think I think all of the guys, you know, you know, Deshaun Nix, like he's a better, you know, he's more prepared going through. You know, being in the G League and you know being with our guys, Jonathan Kaminga. Um, you know, I think it. You know, there's no you can't duplicate it from our league is tough. Yeah. You know, nobody about it. And you know, the guys they take it. You know, when they play the other teams, when Ignite plays the other teams. Yeah. You know, they know something that's is at stake as well. So. Well, yeah, no, I mean, like that kid's got a target on him. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, and this, you're playing oh. the number one team in the West tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the golden child's here, right? Yeah. The number two pick in the draft, right? Yeah, good he, team. he gets everybody's best, I guarantee yeah. it. Yeah. Right? No doubt. Because they got big crowds, yeah. bigger crowds than what they would normally have, and yeah. they know that people have showed up to see this kid, and so the other team gets fired up. So that's well, uh, be it's, it's good, good preparation for him. It's good, and it's good, again, like it's good for, for our league. Yep. Sharif, thanks for coming in, man. Thank you for having he me. He is Mackie. Sharif Abdul Rahim. He's president of the G League. That's going to do it for our show today. Thanks to John Rose across the glass. Thanks to Robbie and Jacob back in the studio. Uh, Grizzlies on against the Sixers tonight at 6 30. Game's not carried locally, it's a TNT game. Uh, Rosa, where are you? you guys are on GLeague.com. And We're on ESPN, ESPN Plus, Plus tonight. ESPN Plus tonight. ESPN Plus. And then uh, Tigers Wichita is on ESPN 2. So. Memphis is going to be on every national TV channel going on tonight. Uh, Check out a bunch of games. We'll be back to talk about it tomorrow. Until then, we go.